I'm thrilled that you could join us to imagine justice and celebrate all that we have accomplished together. Although we can't be together in person, we're happy that a virtual event is more accessible and that folks from all over the country can join us and from all over the state. Please help us kick off a lively conversation. We aim to have in the chat. So get on YouTube and start chatting. Let us know where you're joining us from. Is it Orlando, Florida, Seattle, Washington, Kennewick, Washington? If you're on YouTube, just use the YouTube comment section. And if you're on Facebook, add your comments below using Facebook. It's easy. I'd like to welcome my co-host, Diana Garcia. She's an Assistant Deputy Director of Advocacy at CLS. Welcome, Diana. Thank you, Mer. A little bit more about myself. I am based out of our Kennewick office. I have been with CLS since 2007. 2007. And this is my second time co-hosting this event. So I'd like to say welcome and bienvenidos. And speaking of accessibility, this year we're offering uh, Imagine Justice in English via YouTube and in Spanish via Facebook Live. So please see the chat if you want to change streams. I would also like to give a huge thank you to Fanny Cordero as she is doing live interpretation and believe me, that is hard to do. Just so you know, we're also recording this year's event in both languages so we can later share it with you and so you can end with others who were not able to join the event. And also, you know, for your, for you, if you want to rewatch and live this experience again. If you haven't done so, like Murph stated, please uh, put in the chat where you are coming, joining us from. And if you're having any technical difficulties, please send your name and phone number to our Imagine Justice helpline. And to see helpful tips for how to participate tonight, again, see the links in the chat. Before beginning, we want to thank our amazing Columbia Legal Services staff. And particularly, we have three staff members who have anniversaries of over 30 years. Thank you, Maureen Jenega, Amy Crutzen, and Denise Davis Bobino. And thank you to our incredible board, all of who are with us tonight. Please say hello in the chat to the CLS staff and board. We also want to give gratitude to the Legal Foundation of Washington, the Endowment for Equal Justice, and the Campaign for Equal Justice, all of who support our work throughout the year and have for many years. I see Naomi is in the chat. We have Tonight, we have lots and lots of powerful stories to share. We also have games and prizes to give away. So stay tuned. And now, let's imagine what justice can look like when we transform, not just reform systems of injustice. Together, let's imagine how we can build a just and equitable future together. I would like to introduce Travis Andrews, who is our Director of Equity and Community Engagement and is based in our Seattle offices. Welcome, Travis. Thank you for the introduction and welcome everybody to Imagine Justice 2021. Please, if you will, indulge me in taking a journey for just, just a moment. Behind the veil of justice, racism is revealed. With the blood of those who dare to challenge and speak out, soaking through the fabric of our country. The shifting of this reality seems to be remembered mostly by landmark cases like Roe v. Wade, Brown versus the Board of Education, or generational shifting legislation like the desegregation of our country, the emancipation of enslaved people, and most recently, the expansion of hate crimes are often fought in courtrooms and chambers, boardrooms, and even sometimes golf courses. But the reality is, this is not where the bulk of the work happens. You see, those decisions and signings are only the face of the work. And they're no more representative of the work itself than your face is representative of your fullness as a human being. You see, there are people experiencing the conditions we work on. Oftentimes, these people are overlooked and overtalked, under-resourced. There are, there are actual people impacted by undocumented employees catching COVID and not being able to work. There are children without parents 
because they've been sentenced to life in prison for nonviolent offenses. Without the courage to share these experiences and relive their trauma, no one would ever hear this impact and our work would be completely disconnected. It's the tireless efforts of partners like the Black Prisoners Caucus, the People's Institute, folks like FUJ and the dairy farmers in Eastern Washington who refuse to work without proper accommodations to protect themselves and their loved ones. It's people like Mr. Martinez and Maru, like Nikita Oliver, Mary Flowers, John Page. It's people like them who are oftentimes, they don't have legal representation, they do the work without legislative backing or resources to really make an impact systemically. But just for conversation's sake this evening, let's just imagine for a little minute. Imagine if justice worked for everyone. If undocumented farm workers had supplemental resources during the off season. Imagine if farm workers and incarcerated people alike actually made a living wage. Imagine if incarcerated people who are, were gainfully employed by the companies that benefit from their labor. Imagine if our community partners who not only live the experiences, but have also dedicated themselves to learn the impact of the system, had the resources to accomplish their efforts and to minimize the impact of the systems. Imagine if they had a statewide legal aid network. Imagine if they had a legion of legal support and lobbyists acting not just on their best interests, but with the recommendation and direction from a place of experience. Impacted people don't really have a choice to be impacted or not. They are all in whether they want to be or not. All in, let's think about that for a minute. That's the cost. That's the bar that's been set because the people that we represent and who are impacted by these systems, they are all in. I ask you today, what are you willing to invest? What are you actually willing to give up? Imagine if, we here, everybody under the sound of my voice, all of us who are collected here today, made a commitment to be fully committed. We at CLS are in alignment with our community partners and we have made the decision. We are committed. We are all in. Won't you please join us? Join our efforts to support the folks who are on the ground during these community movements and they are the actual bedrock of social change in our country. Will you join us in supporting their efforts, pushing that advocacy, and once again, changing society? Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you, Travis. Yes, we are all in for community. If you can imagine justice, justice for communities, justice for community leaders, justice for advocacy organizations like CLS, please give. We have some wonderful, generous sponsors who are making this event possible. We would like to thank our sponsors at the advocate level, Group Health Foundation, Schrader, Goldmark, Bender, and Sonata Capital. We have leader level sponsors, Bergman, Draper, Austin, Undo, Davis, Wright, Tremaine, Perkins Coie, and CMAR Community Health Centers. Please, Columbia Legal Services stands with and takes directions from the communities that are most impacted by the racialized systems that perpetuate, perpetuate poverty, injustice, and dehumanization. We are working to dismantle and transform systems of mass incarceration and our criminalized immigration system, systems of oppression that are steeped in white supremacy, and that together we can re-envision so that people aren't cage, that immigrants are centered and respected, and everyone is invited into our circles, into our community, into belongingness. If you'd like to support CLS with a donation, please go to our Give Smart platform using the link in the chat and follow the donation now prompt. If you prefer, you can donate on our website. The donation page is also in the chat. For folks who are on Facebook Live, we are having some technical difficulties that we hope to resolve soon. Fiona? 
Yeah. So another way that you can also engage with us is through social media. What would we do without social media these days? So because you, can't, you can see us and we can't see you, we have a fun and easy way for you to share a selfie. Who doesn't love a selfie, right? As all you need to do is step into our virtual photo booth and share a selfie of you joining Imagine Justice from your home. Just click on the link in the chat, go to our Imagine Justice virtual photo booth, snap a photo, add a filter if you like, and post, just like Murph just did. You should be able to see everyone who has shared their selfie, including our selfies, so please check it out. You can also share your photo or any other reflections on social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter using hashtag Imagine Justice. And feel free to tag CLS as well. Thanks, Deanna, and have a lot of fun with that. Now we would really like to thank one of our amazing pro bono attorneys, Nancy Isserlis. Nancy is of the law firm Winston and Cashett. And Nancy, for several years, worked with our attorneys in our Wenatchee office to provide her expertise in bankruptcy law that resulted in over 50 families in a Royal City mobile manufactured housing park actually purchasing their park. So not only would they own their manufactured or mobile home, they would own the land that it was on. This builds generational wealth. Thank you so much for your time and expertise, Nancy. Please give a shout out to Nancy in the chat. We would also like to thank the Elite Collective for helping us host and produce this amazing event. Thank you, Elite Collective. We would also like to give a shout out and thank you to Adriana Hernandez and Annabelle Hoya, who without them, this would not be possible at all. They have been working incredible hours to make this event possible. Next, I would like to share our ending mass incarceration video. This is a powerful story about some incredibly courageous people who are incarcerated. They are doing powerful advocacy to end mass incarceration. Tony Gonzalez is an attorney in our Wenatchee office. Felix Sifbong is an organizer and advisor for the Asian Pacific Islander Cultural Awareness Group. And he was one of the plaintiffs who was thrown into solitary confinement in the middle of the night. We filed a case against the Department of Corrections to stop this terrible practice. Kamani Carter is active in the Black Prisoners Caucus and founded Taking Education and Creating History, an innovative prisoner education program. Unfortunately, there's always a, a group of people who are almost forgotten or set aside. And we were seeing that uh, with uh, people who are currently in prison and jails. And as we were finding out, it was politically unpopular. Um, people were, were asking me in interviews, why are you advocating uh, for people who are currently incarcerated? Why them and not teachers? Why them and not, you know, parents? Why them and not children? Um, and it was being politicized. And we were able to step in and try and help and push back against that narrative to remind people that we're all going through this together and no one human life is worth less than. Uh, we need to be standing up for everyone and especially the people who are being uh, forgotten or trampled on. They all have amazing stories to tell. Um, they all have stories of triumph and struggle, a lot of experiences to share with us. And how, how could I not be inspired by them? My motivation in working on this advocacy is that, you know, it gives my life purpose. Um, you know, uh, being able to wake up in the morning and know that uh, I'm doing something to impact not only my life but those around me is, is, is something that is very fulfilling and purposeful. And at the end of the day, like, my quote unquote death in society is not to sit in the box and just rock. You know, as harsh as that sounds, it, that's the easy route, you know. Um, my death in society is to contribute to leaving the world.
world a little better than how I found it. And I think that um, being able to do this work, not only for myself, but for my community and my family and my peers, um, is, is, is something that, that, that gives my life purpose, that fuels my soul. I think that people should support the work that TLS does, um, you know, just to ensure that those that the most marginalized and impacted people are represented, right, as, as we move towards liberation. Um, being able to just uplift the voices, you know, I mean, of those most most impacted, impacted is, is, is crucial. Um, being able to uh, understand that, like, liberation isn't just a rich man's game, that liberation should be for everybody, and the work that DLS does is being is being able to kind of um, create the conditions and provide a platform um, that to where liberation is actually accessible to all of us. You know, my my life is one that has always been lived on the margin. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a black man of color involved in the criminal justice system, you know, and so, you know, I've been, uh, 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 I've come from a generation of poverty, um, and so I'm, 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 I'm definitely familiar with, you know, what injustice looks like, and I'm definitely familiar with um, how mass incarceration can begin to erode away at, um, uh, at, human, di- at human dignity, you know what I'm saying? At, uh, 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 at uh, self confidence, self worth. I have begun and been aware of many people who are, you know, great people whose lives have been lost behind these walls or destroyed, you know what I'm saying, by, uh, by institutions that really didn't value, you know, poor and, and lives of people of color. And so, and this is the thing that motivates me to fight. And, and another thing that also motivates me to, to fight and to become an advocate is to also see other people uh, fighting alongside me that does um, that may not share my experience but also empathize with my struggle. Um, and you know, when I look to my left and I look to my right and I see Columbia Legal Services and I see the Village of Hope and I see many of these other organizations, you know, also being advocates for people that they may not be familiar with or may not know personally. These are also the things that motivate me to continue to, you know, really compel me to be a champion of, of, of the people at the bottom. You know, I think that when people feel and need adequate representation, Columbia Legal Services is the, is, the, is the group that is representing them, and that's why they should be supported, because they do awesome work, and they're doing extraordinary things, um, and they're also doing it even when no one's looking. Because I would just like to, you know, really give, um, you know, really give my, you know what I'm saying, uh, my thanks and appreciation, you know what I'm saying, for all of the work that you guys do. Um, you know, for the advocacy work that you guys continue to put forth, um, you know, for the, um, you know, for the stands that you continue to make on, you know what I'm saying, the behalf of prisoners, on the behalf of immigrants, on the behalf of people of color, on the behalf of, 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 of families, on the behalf of organizations, you know what I'm saying, who, uh, um, you know, who really need, you know, legal scholars and legal advocates um, on their side. There's leaders who are quick to politicize many different decisions, and we need to come back and remind them, you know, these are real people that you're making these decision on, decisions on. You need to care for their safety. You need to care for their well-being, just like you're caring for every other, you know, person inside of uh, the state of Washington. Okay, thank you, Felix and Kimanti. This was for sharing your very powerful story tonight. Also, I'd like to welcome Sarah Max, Denise Bobino, for joining us today. I see you have posted, you've been posting on a chat. And Murph, don't you think it's time that we play a game? I think we, it's time we play a game. And I think it's time that people got livelier on Facebook Live. So please get lively, Facebook Live. It's working now. Super.
glad when things come together again. Okay, so game time. For this, we are going to play an emoji game, okay? So we'll have two winners, one from YouTube Live and one from Facebook Live. So I'm glad that Facebook is now back so you can all play. The prize is going to be a CLS tumbler with special goodies that will be mailed out to the winners to their houses, houses. So here we go. Is everyone ready? I'm gonna say this fast. So the sixth person to put in the YouTube chat and Facebook chat, the fist pump emoji wins. Go. Production, do we have winners yet? We're still checking. I don't know if I can even find that emoji. I know. <laughs> I'll move on. And let me tell you, right? Social distancing. Social distancing. <laughs> and okay, our first winner is Andra Kranzler. Andra. Yay, Andra. Our second winner from Facebook Live. Naomi Kim, thank you to the winners. So for our winners, just one thing, please email the, the help desk with your name and we can send you your prizes directly to your house. Deanna, I think it's time we've checked our thermometer. Yes, let's check it. All right, hey, thank you, John Aslin for your donation of $1,500. And thank you, Martina Cartman for your donation of $50. It looks like the thermometer is continuing to rise. Yes, and I hope it just keeps on rising because we do want to meet our goal for tonight. So thank you again to all our donors. We could not do the work without you. Now, let's hear about our Promoting Immigrant Equity Advocacy Table and one example of their success for this year. I would like to introduce Andrea Schmidt, who is an attorney with, with CLS and is based out of our Olympia office as well as Jose Martinez, who is a community leader and the name plaintiff in the landmark case of Martinez Cuevas, which is the Ruder Brothers Dairy Inc. Welcome, Andrea and Jose. People finding their own power and using their own power change the world. And lawyers can have a role in helping them to do that. An example of that in, in the advocacy that I've had a chance to do is um, the founding of Familias Unidas por la Justicia, which is a, a, an independent farm worker union that was uh, founded in 2013 in the Skagit Valley. And these were uh, 250 berry pickers who walked off the job in support of a coworker who'd been fired, a coworker who asked for a higher rate in a certain kind of berries. They realized the power that they had, they, they organized themselves, and then they reached out and asked for help. At the beginning of the pandemic, when folks in packing houses in the Yakima Valley were being uh, exposed to really dangerous conditions around COVID, seven of them, seven different packing houses had strikes within a really short period of time. We could file unfair labor practice charges. We could research what employers were allowed to do when there was a group of strikers out in front of a place. When um, Trabajadores Unidos por la Justicia, which is the, the union that formed at Allen Brothers Packing, uh, as a result of that strike, when when that union first formed, we also, you know, helped them with a bunch of paperwork uh, that they might not have known how to do otherwise, and we're just supporting in that way. Me han ayudado bastante a mí y hacer un cambio extraordinario aquí en la comunidad y quizás en todo el estado de Washington. The legislature is a tough place to advocate for farm workers. Really difficult place. It's um, it's the place where the power, the extraordinary power of the agricultural industry in this state is on display the most. <laughs> the landscape completely changed after Familias Unidas por la Justicia came into existence. And that's because 
previously, we might be able to get one farm worker to come and tell a story about something that had impacted them in particular. Now, um, familias can get a room full of farm workers to come. They can, they can have three or four farm workers tell their stories to the people making the decisions. The legislators have to look at the workers, listen to them. I'm motivated these days in part because I can see the connections between this work and the larger social movements that are happening now in this country, um, racial justice movements. And I can see the ways in which the legacy of slavery affects not only this fight, but essentially every fight we have for farm workers, every fight we have for incarcerated people. And it's, it's all connected to something um, that is imperative. It has to be done or we're going to have a world that we can't bear to live in. And I think we're at a moment in this country where we're all questioning which side wins that fight. Con la ayuda de todos ellos y varias organizaciones más, yo he aprendido muchas cosas sobre mis derechos y cómo mejorar cosas en el trabajo. Para mí y para los que me rodean también, ¿por qué no? Para toda la comunidad, con lo que yo pueda hacer, yo lo hago. No me ha afectado, sino que me ha fortalecido. Me ha dado esperanza, me ha dado ánimo de seguir adelante. Thank you so much, Andrea and Jose for telling that story. It's incredibly powerful advocacy that has affected farm workers around the country. Now it's time to raise the gavel. And I have a question for everyone. Have you ever tried to take a gavel on an airplane? If you have, let me know in the chat. I have. When we argued the Martinez case in front of the state Supreme Court, we received a gavel from that hearing. And I was taking that gavel from Seattle to Yakima to present to the Yakima office. And it was very meaningful. But when I tried to board the plane, I had no idea that a gavel was considered a weapon, a blunt instrument that you could not bring on the plane. So there was no way to get that gavel and me together to Yakima. But eventually we were able to put the gavel in the cargo hold and it was able to safely travel to Yakima. So tonight, we hope you will raise your gavel, stand for justice and support CLS in our goal to raise $75,000. And I get asked a lot, where does the money go? $500, for example, can support a state Supreme Court argument like the one in the Martinez case. It can help make sure that our state constitution applies to everyone. People who are living in their cars, people who are working in the fields, people who are facing health consequences in prison from COVID-19. Your $500 donation can help end and transform systems of injustice and unfairness. $250 can be incredibly meaningful. $250 can help a case get filed to stop juvenile detention facilities from handcuffing children and placing them in solitary confinement. $250 can help support a class action to reveal human trafficking violations of farm workers. Your dollars are incredibly important. $250 can help advocate for farm workers, for agricultural workers working in the fields during times of extreme heat and extreme smoke. We all remember the temperatures this summer. Imagine being heavily covered to protect yourself from pesticides and not having the protection that you need in extreme heat and extreme smoke. As a community, we can come together and stand for justice. We, at this point, have raised over 
over $67,592. Holy cow, we are so close. Please stand with us, stand with the advocates and help us achieve justice. Yana? Yes, and thank you. I mean, we are so very close, 67,000. How much more? Please continue to donate. And we, I have some very, very good news. I'm very excited right now. So some generous donors are offering a challenge. Everyone loves a challenge. Don't you love a challenge, Murph? I love a challenge. Hopefully with this challenge, we can meet our goal tonight. So a big thanks to our board of directors for providing a match. Go board. Woo. Thank you, board. So we can match 20 donations at $250 and match 50 donations at $100. What was that again, Deanna? Again, because this is very amazing, okay? We are looking for 20 donations of $250 and 50 donations at $100. So, and our board will match these gifts. So again, we believe that personally significant gifts are the most meaningful. So please consider giving what you believe is significant to you. Any gift will help us continue to do our work. I do want to note that we are careful about who we ask for money. CLS has a long history of giving up funding that has excluded certain low-income people or limited their access to justice by prohibiting the use of legal goals such as class action and policy advocacy. So as part of our race equity work, we vet foundations and other funding groups to ensure value alignment. We are also moving toward a community-centric community fundraising model that prioritizes collaboration to build community and connection rather than, it, than fracture it through competition. So again, that's why we are asking you, our community, to support us. Thank you, Diana. And tonight we get to celebrate folks from our community as the 2021 Visionary of the Year. And tonight we are recognizing the two named plaintiffs in the class action lawsuit, Martinez versus the Ruder Farms. Jose Martinez and Patricia Aguilar were dairy workers at the time, that at the time they agreed to be named plaintiffs in this landmark case that resulted in overtime protection for tens of thousands of agricultural workers in Washington. Unfortunately, Patricia could not be with us tonight, but please join me in the chat in YouTube and on Facebook Live to thank and offer love to Patricia. We thank them for being so patient. This case took years and years to wind through our court system and then another year or so to actually be decided after it was argued. Thank you, Patricia and Jose. we as lawyers had been thinking for a long time about a challenge to the exclusion of farm workers from overtime. And uh, we presented that to Jose, to Patricia, and they were committed to the idea that they could help their community on a much broader level than just the folks who worked at that dairy. The workers are exposed to heat and cold in the fields and they labor in geographic isolation. They're less likely to be voters, less likely to speak English as a first language, aren't wealthy, in fact, are among the poorest workers in the nation. They have a shorter life expectancy, a higher incidence of disease and disability, limited access to health care, insurance, and education, less likely to have employer-provided health benefits, higher rates of sexual harassment and assault, higher rates of other exploitation, including financial, higher exposure to toxins, more likely to be people of color, at least now, uh, less likely to have sanitary and stable housing, less likely to have collective bargaining rights, uh, less likely to have lobbyists, less likely to make campaign contributions to elected officials. Would you then still suggest that it's a coincidence that labor laws have consistently excluded them from the protections afforded other workers? Significa una esperanza, una esperanza para un cambio en el futuro por todo lo que está pasando el día de hoy. Porque si no apoyamos, uh, no podemos, no tenemos la herramienta para tratar de hacer un cambio en el futuro pues, y desde ahora para adelante. Me da gusto involucrarme con ellos en cualquier actividad que se tenga que hacer. 
yo siempre estoy dispuesto a hacer, a poner mi grano de arena. Me motiva, me motiva mucho porque a, al final se están parando todas esas injusticias que, que yo tuve que pasar. Y al hacer esto, otra persona no tiene que pasar las mismas violaciones que yo tuve que pasar. He estado trabajando porque uh, conozco mucha gente aquí en la comunidad yo, y uh, me hablan de diferentes lugares tratando de encontrar alguna clase de información, algún lugar donde ellos pueden acudir por ayuda, por tantas violaciones como dije, que hay alrededor. Así es como me he involucrado yo y, y sigo todavía hasta el día de hoy. A la hora que me hablen, yo estoy dispuesto a, a contestar el teléfono. Para mí significa una cosa muy hermosa, porque al final del día he logrado muchas cosas con Colombia Lego Service. Estoy muy agradecido y lo voy a estar todo el tiempo con Colombia Lego Service. Y lo que quiero decir es que a mí me gustaría que más personas en la comunidad se involucraran en esto ¿verdad? para hacer un cambio, porque si no se involucran nunca vamos a hacer un cambio. Todos unidos podemos lograr muchas cosas, sea organizaciones o sea ya personas en general que tengan la voluntad de servir y de buscar una manera diferente de vivir, un mejoramiento en general. Por eso estoy muy agradecido y muchas gracias por todo. Welcome back and thank you. That video was just amazing. As always, our visionaries are always fantastic. I do want to just mention briefly all the love we are getting on our chats here. For example, so many amazing people here tonight supporting virtually. The best soul argument question ever. Grateful for you. And CLS goes the distance. Thank you for all the love. Really appreciate it. But I think it's time, Murph, and I don't know if you agree with me here, but I think it's time for another game. What yeah, do you think? I think it is. I was just thinking about that oral argument question. I think it was one of the best ever because it, this case was about dairy workers. And the question was because the growers were saying that it's seasonal, that milking cows is seasonal. And what did Justice Gonzalez say? In what sense is milking cows seasonal? <laughs> do you know, Diana? Year round, year round work here. <laughs> Maybe the cows stopped, right? Every three months, but no, year round work here. But thank you, thank you so much. And let's move on to our second game of the evening. So the prize is going to be a TUJ hoodie. Ooh, I, I would know. really like a TUJ hoodie. They very look very warm. Cool. All right. And this is the Farm Worker Labor Union that Andrea highlighted. So I'm very excited for this hoodie. Thank you, TUJ. Woo, and thank you for all the work, the TUJ leadership. You have done so much fantastic work there. So just a reminder, there will be two prizes, one for Facebook Live and one for YouTube Live. This time we are going to have a question instead of an emoji game. So please listen here. So what hashtag have our guests been using to celebrate our event tonight? In time. And for this one, we will select the third person in both YouTube and Facebook Live. Okay, so I think we've given folks enough time. And the answer is hashtag Imagine Justice. And please use it. Use it a lot tonight in all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Continue to use it. And our winners are, hey, Leslie K. Brown is the first winner. Woohoo, Leslie. And who is our second winner? Come on, Facebook Live, we need you. This is your chance to win a T-U-J hoodie. Josefina Magallana is yeah. our next winner. Yay! Fantastic! Okay. Woo. All right. Thank you for participating here. So for our winners to get your prize, please remember to email the help desk with your name. And let's take a look at our fundraising thermometer. Where are we at? Are we close to our goal? So excited. So excited. We are at 72,382. Diana, we are so close. Please continue to contribute. 
And thank you, Curtis Schmidt, for your generous donation of $1,000. And thank you, Kelly Suter, for your donation of $250. We have many other folks donating as well. We have reached our goal, Mark. We reached our goal. Thank you. We are over the top by $392. That is so exciting. Woo. You are all amazing. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What an incredible, fantastic community. We would like to end with one last thought around voting. So remember that we all have power and we are all in community. Well, it may not be an election year. There are many important local elections happening around the state. We all have the power to vote. We all have the power to contact and work with our representatives. Anyone can testify in Olympia. Anyone can reach out and tell your representative where you stand. Election day is November 3rd. And all year round, you can be engaged in what happens in your community and in your world. There is so much hope. Be inspired by Jose. Be inspired by Tr Patricia. Be inspired by Camonte. Be inspired by the advocates at CLS. Please vote for justice. If you're incarcerated and, in, and undocumented and can't vote, Still, raise your voice, take action, testify. Please check out our website at columbialegal.org for more information. I'm so excited to be part of this community and part of Columbia Legal Services. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. There are other ways to support and get involved. Join, join us on social media, sign up for email updates. And thanks so much again for being with us. And thank you, Deanna. This was really fun, if a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, Murph. And I just want to give out one last reminder. Our Imagine Justice campaign lasts for another week. So the end of the campaign is October 21st. So please tell your friends, your family, your coworkers to donate and help us continue to go above the goal we have already met. And thank you very much for you know getting us there. Muchas gracias a todos. Buenas noches y hasta el año que viene. And thank you for joining us today and good night. Good night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.